is Business Rockstar. Welcome to Scale the Wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. You've probably heard of the men's warehouse, and if so, you'll know of our guest today. We guarantee it. It hasn't exactly been a seamless road for George Zimmer the past few years. He founded Men's Warehouse, built it into a multi-billion dollar empire, then was fired by the board three years ago. But now he has two more companies and a payback plan. George Zimmer, welcome. Your story could make a novel or even a really great movie. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm working on the novel and I'm writing it so it can be adopted for film. Are you serious? I am. Oh my gosh, I was only joking. By, well, by, I I'm onto something here. What are you up to these days? Well, I'm uh, building a new company called Generation Tux, which is simply leveraging something that I know a bit about, which is tuxedos and mm -hmm. suits. Only this time, instead of trying to sell them, I'm renting them. Online? Through online. Platform? All online. And i uh, been doing it for about six months. And, and I how can, is it going? It's going well enough that I can smile and say this is going to be bigger than men's. Really? Yeah. Now, why tuxedos? How, how can just tuxedos be bigger than men's wear? Well, it's tuxedos and suits. And suits, okay. And 40% of our business right now is in suits. So it's tuxedos and suits. Uh, we sold uh, millions of, of tuxedos and suits at Men's Warehouse. And in fact, men's still rents three and a half million tuxedos a year. Interesting. So I So a, a I good a market there for you, a good target. Um, it's so weird sitting across from you and hearing that voice. My <laughs> gosh, you sound just like how you sound on TV in those commercials. But um, I have to ask you about this, about, about being ousted from the men's warehouse. Yes. Uh, it, because it was so public. Um, mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was, uh, it's been three years, so it's certainly not uh, uh, painful anymore. Uh, but I, I would imagine in the beginning it was very painful. Well, you know, the further you get away from something, the, the more uh, uh, confused you get between actual memory and imagination, which are right next to each other in the brain. So I, I hope what I'm telling you is what actually happened, but for all I know, it's just my imagination. Uh, they wanted me to remain as a figurehead and uh, I just wasn't that type of guy. I, I felt I was still the, 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 the leader of the organization. And so when I said I didn't want to do that, they just fired me, mm -hmm. told me they put my furniture in storage and to turn in my phone and computer and hit the road. And so and I got home. this is the company that you had spent most of your life building. I founded the company yeah. in 1973. Uh, so I got home that night and uh, I knew it was coming 24 hours ahead. So my family sitting at dinner that night, nobody wanted to talk to dad because he had just been fired. Nobody knew what to say. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey kids, everybody gets knocked down in life, even your dad. And the mark of a man is not how often or how you get knocked down, but how you get up. Hmm. And although I haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> I'm going to get up. I'm not going to retire. And that was the message. Although your, your good friend Mark Benioff, CEO of Salesforce, he actually, uh, from what I read, gave you the advice, George, retire. You've, you've you know, been ousted and all this public sympathy has poured out for you. That's a great legacy to retire on. When I went to Mark on New Year's Day, uh, January 1st, 2014, and said, Mark, I have an idea, and it may involve Salesforce. I'd like to run it by you. And we were sitting on the beach in Hawaii in bathing suits, and I said, online tuxedo and suit rental, and a smile, he didn't even have to speak. The smile went from ear to ear, and he said, I think Salesforce can handle that. 
<laughs> I'm Tui Vu, broadcasting from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. This is Scale the Wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. My guest today is George Zimmer, founder of the startup Generation Tux, an online platform for renting tuxedos. Mr. Zimmer was also the founder of Men's Warehouse before being fired from the company three years ago. Um, and you were just talking about how Mark Benioff liked, Mark Benioff of Salesforce liked your uh, tux rental online idea. Um, but also want to ask you about how that is working out because your background is mostly in brick and mortar stores. Um, but exclusively. This, exclusively, but this is really more of a tech company. How challenging was that for you? Extremely challenging. And I, I know that people often ask uh, uh, successful people if they could do things over, would they do things differently? And there is something I would do differently at uh, Generation Talks. I'm now on my third CTO. Oh. And I would have made a more thorough investigation and gotten a real technology partner because Salesforce was a supplier. Mm -hmm. Although they've invested in the business, they, they really are more of a supplier. And I, I could have used a, a technology partner. I want to ask you, what are the three best pieces of advice you can offer to an aspiring entrepreneur or business owner? The number one thing is to be passionate about what you're going to do. I think too many people uh, make up business plans based on the economics and, 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 and they're not sure if they're gonna be really passionate. And, and when I say passionate, I mean it's gotta be the type of thing that you can do 24 hours without looking at, at your watch. That's the type of passion that, that I'm talking about. Now, beyond that, I think it is very helpful to have wealthy friends. And that was what enabled me to get this going. Because uh, if I was trying to build a company and finance it with investors at the same time, I would find that to be somewhat of a distraction. Uh, my focus is on the product and the business, not on the, the but money. But very few people have access to the kind of wealthy people that you have access to. So then what would be your advice for them, your average entrepreneur starting out? So you, you need to start younger. Uh, when I started Men's Warehouse, I, I had never been married. And I, I thought that was uh, instrumental because it enabled me to uh, make creating a successful company my top priority. And uh, I actually feel even today, building my second act, you have to make it a top priority. If, uh, if it's tied for top, you run the risk of making mistakes. And uh, that's why I'm uh, uh, so, so, so enthusiastic today about what I'm doing. It's still my top priority. Really great to see. We'll come back and talk more with George Zimmer about some of the biggest obstacles he's faced. We sort of know what one of them already is and how he managed to scale the wall to success. Scale the Wall is powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, you can go to npm.com. I'm Tui Vu, and this is Business Rockstars. This is Business Rockstar. Hi there, I'm Tui Vu, broadcasting from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. This is Scale the Wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, you can go to npm.com. Small business owners, as we all know, always face hurdles and challenges, and they need to learn how to scale the wall. We are discussing those challenges today with entrepreneurs, 
And this next man probably needs no introduction. You've probably heard of the men's warehouse. And if so, you'll know of our guest today. We guarantee it. It hasn't exactly been a seamless road for George Zimmer the past few years. He founded men's warehouse, built it into a multi-billion dollar empire, and then was fired by the board three years ago. But now he has two more companies combining tech with retail. George Zimmer, welcome. Hi. Hi there. Are you still bitter about what happened at Men's Warehouse three years ago? Absolutely not. And let me be very clear about this. When you look back sometimes on life's great obstacles, what you discover is that it was the obstacle that propelled you or enabled you to reach the next level. And that's exactly how I feel. I'm now taking my store bricks and mortar experience in tuxedos and suits, and I'm going to do it again online. I consider myself the luckiest guy I know right now. Well, you've got that, the Generation Tux online. Um, but then you have also have this other service that you're describing as almost an Uber for tailors, right? Tailors who will come to your house. Right. We're now making that more about weddings. Ah. What do you think, uh, Twee? If I said to you, or if you have children that are going to get married, we, if you give us the tuxedos for your wedding, we will send a tailor to your wedding for a couple hours to take care of any last minute emergencies, like a button pops off or a strap breaks or that a hand drop. Sounds pretty good. That's complimentary. Complimentary. Well, complimentary, complimentary is always good. <laughs> but you said you're not bitter about the men's warehouse no. experience. It probably also helps that for you, maybe, that the company isn't doing very well right now, men's warehouse. Yes, it, it does uh, uh, enable me to uh, walk around with this big, uh, I told you so, smile. And uh, Do you want it back? Do you want to take it back? You know, uh, I, I'm always open to everything, uh, but the company is so weak now and the price is so significant because when they bought Joe Bank, they added $1.8 billion of debt. When I was fired, Men's Warehouse had no debt. So it's a, a little different problem today. So is that a yes or a no? I'm not sure what your answer was. Well, uh, the answer is that I, I would not be interested to pay the multi-billion dollar price tag that the company would command today. But at a lower price tag, you would definitely be interested in, in taking it back and well, putting your it, stamp on it again. Well, I, I would certainly look at it. I mean, I'm now in the online business in, in very similar products, but there, there may be a way of combining it. Did you ever think that you would be a tech entrepreneur someday? Never. <laughs> I didn't even use smartphones until the iPhone was introduced. Really? Uh, so no, I never thought I would be a uh, tech entrepreneur. And as I said, the biggest mistake I made was not spending more time getting the right tech partner. Yeah. What was your biggest hurdle? Yeah. My voice is not on the Generation Tux website. So and it's I, such an iconic voice. And it's, it's going to be on the website later this summer. Uh, but I've made a number of, of tactical mistakes that are being corrected now. No one thought of that, to put your voice, this iconic voice, onto the Generation Tux website? After you get fired, in the way I was fired, your confidence goes down. Mm. Even and for you? Even for me. So I wasn't able, even though I said, well, why aren't we making this more focused on me, I wasn't able to express that strongly enough to my marketing team. I'm Twee Vu, broadcasting from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. This is Scale the Wall, where we talk about the hard realities of failure in business. It's powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. And with us is George Zimmer, founder of Generation Tux. He is also founder and former CEO of Men's Warehouse. 
So when you're not busy starting companies and figuring out the tech world, uh, what do you do for fun? What's a fun fact people don't know about you? Well, uh, what are the fun? I mean, people don't know uh, anything about me other than uh, my television uh, uh, personality. I don't drink is uh, an odd oddity about me. I'm a former public company CEO who, who doesn't drink. Um, I do play golf. There's uh -huh. nothing unusual about that. Uh, I've got four children from 14 to 32. So uh, That's quite an age spread. I've got more experience with the California public schools than pretty much anybody <laughs> around. And is it true that a lot of your friends have said that if, if they're reincarnated, they would like to come back as one of your dogs? Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, I'm on the uh, uh, board of the Oakland Zoo. Uh, we just had a big event there uh, last Saturday night. And uh, I'm a big animal, not just animal rights person, although I, I do uh, uh, believe in animal rights. I just love being around animals. Uh, if you could go back, what would you tell your younger self based on all that you've experienced? Well, you know, I, I've said this to other people, and I, I heard myself say it, so this is not the first time I would say it. It is, when you're successful, it's hard to believe when you go home at night that you are as successful as you are. And my advice, therefore, is enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. It's not about uh, the destination. It's the journey. And so many people are, are, are so successful, but apparently unhappy. And I say it's better to be happy beyond your success. What is the one thing you would tell every entrepreneur about failure? It doesn't exist other than in your mind. Really? Yeah. What do you now, mean by that? What I mean by that is, is that only when you decide not to try again have you failed. So even if your business goes bankrupt and you can't get any more money, who's to say that a couple of years later you won't start again? So as, as long as you're prepared to continue to try, I don't think failure really exists. The flip side of that, is it necessary to have failed to be a successful entrepreneur? Uh, I don't think it's necessary, because I had never failed prior to the men's warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't say I would failed now, unless you think being fired is failing. Uh, Which no, you don't I, think it is? I don't. I, I, again, my, my whole sense of failure is that it's what other people lay on you and that as long as you can get up off the ground, you're never failing. Okay, what are the three biggest lessons to learn in dealing with the challenges of starting or growing a business? Well, uh, certainly managing uh, people is, 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 is always going to be uh, the most important part of business because all of us are so different. And in order to get people to be as passionate as you, you have to create an environment which they respond to. Uh, uh, too often we think that we're building a company for ourselves, and we forget that we have dozens or hundreds or thousands of people that are part of our team and they've got to have the same passion as we do otherwise it's kind of a short-term proposition uh, i think a second thing would be and this is more who i am than probably mba type advice i'm not a graduate uh, uh, degree holder is is you've got to believe in yourself and not be deterred by what other people say. Because almost every great idea 
is going to be challenged by other people if for no other reason than they didn't have the idea. So believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Do you have a third tip? Uh, well, I, I've, I've, I don't think there's a, a, any way to get away from the fact that if you're doing something that you love to do, even if you don't see how you can make a lot of money doing it, I would still recommend you do it because it may in fact lead to something uh, down the road in your life that is more economically beneficial. I, I just feel very strongly that people should follow their passion and not uh, the dollars. And is there a single biggest mistake you've made in your life that you would like to share with us? Uh, no, there isn't, but thank really? you very for asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I've made many mistakes, but none that I'd really like to share. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you can tell me off camera. Off camera, I'd be glad to. <laughs> and I have to request this of you, and I'm sure people do it to you sure. all the time. But could you please, just for nostalgia, say that famous line for me? Uh, if you want to know about entrepreneurs, check Twee. I guarantee it. <laughs> That's not the line. Say the real line from the commercial. Just look straight in the ca okay. camera and say it. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. I love that. Thank you for doing that for us. And join us every Friday as we scale the wall powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. For more information, go to npm.com. I'm Tui Vu, and this is Business Rockstars.